Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. January 23rd, Telemachus. In the year 404, bloody gladiatorial battles had been going on for 140 years. On this date, in 393, Honorius became emperor of Rome. Five years before today's story starts, the emperor had decreed the violent games should stop, but they went right on, until Telemachus showed up. Size-wise, he was a little man, but he played a big role in ending the gladiatorial games. In 1984, President Ronald Reagan told the story of the little monk at the annual national prayer breakfast. When a godly man stands, evil falls. In shiny armor and distinctive helmets crowned with ostrich and peacock feathers, the gladiators strode into the packed arena. They were professional warriors who fought to the death, supposedly for the glory of Caesar, some carrying swords and others holding spears or nets. Some gladiators were slaves and some were criminals condemned to the arena. They marched around the arena that was filled with 87,000 spectators who, anticipating the carnage to come, cheered. These spectators loved to see bloodshed. In front of the emperor's box, the warriors stopped, raised their arms in salute, and in one voice they shouted, Hail Caesar, those who are about to die salute thee. The crowd cheered again. On the first day of January in 404, a monk named Telemachus happened to be walking past the Colosseum. He was from Asia and on a pilgrimage to visit the churches and encourage the Christians in Rome. Dressed in his simple monk's mantle, which reflected his holy life of prayer and self-denial, Telemachus stood in sharp contrast to all the spectators flocking into the Colosseum. What he saw overwhelmed him. Drawn by the noise, Telemachus got sucked into a crowd and the crowd pressed him forward into the Colosseum. There before him were the gladiators, engaged in combat. The crowd loved long and skillful battles, but when one fighter was obviously overmatched, the spectators voted on whether the loser would live or die. With each thumbs down, the superior fighter thrust his weapon into the loser, and another person entered the arena and clubbed him on the head with a mallet. His corpse was dragged away and Rome's death roar intensified. They called it entertainment and paid heavy purses to the winners. The brutality of the crowd stunned Telemachus. The greedy acceptance of violence and death opposed the vow he had taken as a monk. His life was about structure that allowed him to live a life of prayer and work. The sight and sound of tens of thousands of screaming people rejoicing in this slaughter grieved his spirit. He raced down to the arena floor and pushed his way through the rabid crowd until he reached the wall, jumped over it, and strode out onto the field of battle. He went unnoticed by the crowd until he got close to the two gladiators who were engaged in a life and death struggle. Telemachus stepped between the two battling gladiators and cried out, In the name of Christ, stop! In the name of Christ, stop! Enraged, the gladiators turned their anger on Telemachus. They stabbed him to death. The crowd joined in and rained rocks down upon him, and his lifeless body lay at the gladiators' feet. When the news of what Telemachus had done reached Emperor Honorius, who had been taught by the church, he was so affected that he immediately counted Telemachus among the victorious martyrs. Within three days, he proclaimed an end to the gladiator games that had been going on in Rome since 264 BC. There was never another battle between gladiators. Telemachus exemplified the word of God found in Romans 12:21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. What ongoing evil has God shown you that calls for you to speak out in love and overcome it with good?
When a godly man stands, evil falls. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.